Welcome back. John Ridley is best known as the Oscar-winning screenwriter of 12 Years a Slave and for TV's American Crime. But one of his first passions in life was comic books. Ridley has now teamed up with DC Comics on two new projects that reimagine classic superheroes in diverse ways, including the first black Batman. John Ridley joins us now. Happy New Year to you, and thanks so much for joining us, Mr. Ridley. Now, you came up with the idea to reimagine the DC universe as diverse. When did you first encounter comics and start thinking about black superheroes? Um, a long time ago. I mean, I'm uh, no longer a kid, but <laughs> I've been reading comic books since I was a kid, and I just remember the first time that I saw a Black Lightning comic book, and always loved comics, never really thought about representation much, but I think when you see what it is you're missing, when you see a hero who looks like you, whose day job was the same as my mom, was a teacher, you realize that um, representation does make a difference and little things do mean a lot. So for me, this has been a long journey of not just appreciating comics where heroes look like me, but wanting to be an individual who had the capacity to deliver comics to other readers who represented their backgrounds. And this is a bit of a leading question, but how important is it for young kids in particular to see themselves represented in comic books? I think it's huge. Um, as a parent myself, um, you know, my kids are at an age where they don't merely ingest things, but they comment about it. And they comment about not necessarily seeing heroes or individuals or folks in the wider media who look like them. Um, inspiration is absorbed a lot of times. So we can talk about representation. We can express how important it is as adults to younger people uh, for them to know that uh, they can accomplish anything, but for young people to be able to see that, to know, to know that, to absorb it on their own, that is huge. And you are, of course, a celebrated Oscar-winning screenwriter. What was it about writing graphic novels that appealed to you, and, and how different, uh, how much of an adjustment was that? Well, I mean, the big difference, it, 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 it's intrinsically fun. I mean, I appreciate many of the things that I've done, 12 Years a Slave, American Crime, you talked about, a TV show I did, Gorilla, uh, a documentary, Let It Fall, about the L.A. uprising. Um, I'm deeply appreciative of having the opportunity to tell stories like that, but they're tough stories. They really are. And to be able to tell stories that are literally fantastic, that um, are not uh, constrained by budget, that are merely constrained by ideas and originality, there's great joy there. And, you know, I, I think of my kids, they're deeply appreciative of the storytelling I've done, uh, but they love things like, like Black Panther. They, they love to go out and, and see these um, incredible stories rendered on the big screen. So to be able to, to add to that mythology on the page, for me, it's a great joy. And, and let's talk about Future State, the next Batman. The main character mm -hmm. has his origins in the original Batman comics. Who is he and how is having a black Batman different from the one that many of us know, Bruce Wayne? Well, uh, the individual who's going to be playing Batman is one of the sons of Lucius Fox. And I think even people who just um, tangentially, just uh, casually know Batman, um, they remember Morgan Freeman playing that character. So to, to be the son of one of Batman's uh, trusted allies, what that means in story, what that means on the page, what it means to be part of a very prominent family in Gotham City, those things to me are very interesting. And to your question, what makes this Batman or this iteration of Batman very unique? Um, I know you, how you ask the question, but I don't look at him as being black Batman. He is a young man of very particular circumstances who happens to be black. And I think if it weren't for those particular areas of his life, of his family, of his narrative, then yes, he would just be a black guy who's putting on the bat suit. Um, but Jace is going to have his own story. He's going to have his own struggles um, separate from being Batman. A lot of that is going to be about family, which is very important to me, again, as a father, as a husband, to really lean into aspects of family. All of that is going to make Jace's story very unique. And then on top of it, yes, he does get to be a hero. And all of those things that um, these characters do as hero, that's where the fun is. That's where the excitement is. But it's all predicated on family. And, and that is a good point point and a good distinction that you make there. So why do you think that it has taken so long for superheroes who happen to be black to go mainstream? I mean, there were some, some black and other diverse characters in older comics, but they never really moved to the forefront. 
You know, look, I think it's the same as in any other industry that it's taken a while for people to really acknowledge changing demographics. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of being hit in the face with finances and business. And you see where the growth industries are. You see where um, the demographics are, who are excited, who are interested in spending their money. Look, I don't think it's an accident that the biggest films over the past year or, or a year removed when we could still go to movie theaters, Black Panther, Wonder Woman, Captain Marvel. Um, you look at films like Crazy Rich Asians, where people have this pent up demand to see representation, to see themselves in the products that they're supporting with their money. So I, I like to think that part of it is just people um, looking at the world and saying, hey, we need to do a better job of representing. But even if it just comes down to business, um, sometimes that's what it takes for change to be made, um, irrespective of why. I'm just very thankful that in the now, I get to be part of that storytelling. Right. Okay. Pleasure to talk to you, John Ridley. Thanks so much for your time. And a reminder for our viewers, both Future State, The Next Batman, and The Other History of the DC Universe are available at participating comic book retailers and digital platforms such as Comixology, Apple, and Amazon. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.